to the to the feds on the other line. What's up, fellas? How you doing? What's going on, hombres? I don't fucking care anymore, dude. What's the <laughs> point? Why bother? Why even fucking bother? But now I'm like, what's the point? Why bother, man? This is great. You know what I mean? Like, well, I've got a tartarian boner pill actually in the works. So. Oh, <laughs> You're gonna be so rich. G Dubs you know, is gonna be jealous. It's called, it's called the mud flood pill. There's a lot more in the shaft people don't know about. And when you oh, take this pill, it's a good pitch. <laughs> and you can see where those oh, uh, gee, those extra man. bottom levels were the whole time. Like, <laughs> oh, a little more it's always under. under. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're growing. We're doing our best. We're growing. growing. <laughs> yeah, I love oh, it. yeah, man. For the architecture and the Pan Ams, and you know, it's understandable for people to get interested in this stuff and be like, "Wow, was it an ancient civilization?" and dive right in, which I think is what Chris was kind of. Um, Maybe we kind of entered in the same boat like that when Michelle uh, shared our stuff back in the day, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you had, your videos were, were um, inspiring to me also, uh, Thank Chris. You. So, yeah, no doubt. Um, to me, my, my, my focus is more geared towards, like, the foundational stuff and, like, uh, the foundations and the infrastructure might have been overgrown and stuff like that. So that's what I'm working on. So if it's anything, like, it's, if it's overgrown, like, above ground, built above ground. The idea that you brought to the table, Chris, like uh, using the dir dirigibles for leverage. Yeah, right. And the uh, block and tackle, uh, A-frame, mm -hmm. you know, Archimedes, you could give me a, a lever big enough, I can move the earth or the realm. Right, so right. If it's above ground, like it's not really focusing my attention right now at this stage of the game, I guess I could say in a general sense. Right. you help me come around to that on top of static other people and oh, i don't yeah. like this infighting stuff like no. is it mouth <laughs> is it red brick how many red bricks yada yada it's like guys just be interested in the research and move it forward instead of saying this guy's a paid chill or this it's like right hey, dude it's that's what's been kind of black billing me lately because there's so much infighting and like you know i jump on the facebook and look at the uh tatarian groups and just like it's just gotten so out of hand. I'm just like, I'm out. I can't take it anymore, dude. Like, this is just getting too ridiculous. I try to stay away from the whole flat earth movement and what's going on with that right now because the in-house fighting has gotten to a point where, to me, it's just like the real housewives of YouTube truth or community. <laughs> and it, most people are tuning in, I feel like, for that reason. And I read some right. of the comments and people are all about it. You know, they're all about that division and it, it is entertainment to them perfect example of divide and conquer it's being played out within these circles and i'm definitely guilty of kind of playing into it myself there's been times where i've reacted in ways to the commenters that wasn't the best of me i don't look back at it fondly sometimes people right. even said jokes that were so over my head i just immediately thought that there was negativity <laughs> to it and I just like right. went out their throats and they were like, this happens every time I try to make a joke. I'm guilty of that too. I'm a snap type of dude where I drop of a hat working on that. Um, I always keep it above board and professional though, even if I'm busting balls, right? When you're in fighting like that and pointing the finger inwards, you're not doing the research. So for me, I'm all about the research. I don't have as much time as I'd like to have. So I would never endeavor to point the finger in a negative fashion towards somebody else, unless they slight me directly. And even still then we'll take it into consideration because I'm not about, I mean, you know, I got other stuff going on. That's how I roll. I like your, um, uh, your lives lately. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to do, but it's easy at the same time. Like it's so easy. It's like sometimes I don't even want to do it because you know, it's the same five, 10 people in there every time I'm not actually gaining any traction, but like, the crazy mofos that show up in my chat, like they make me think they challenge me and you know, they're not just agreeing with everything I say. They're actually giving me input on my ideas and my theories. You know what I mean? I think that's where a lot of the infighting comes from. Just confirmation bias. People just want, want to be uh, reassured that their belief systems and thought processes are, are good. And the only way to do that is to, to find yourself in an echo chamber. You know what I mean? And like, I was there, man, I was, 
you know, I was showing up to all the different live streams of all the Tatarian researchers, and I was just soaking that shit up. Man. Other than, you know, the maps and, you know, some of the old depictions and some of the old pictures of buildings, other than that, I, can't, I, I don't have any more answers than I did before that research, you know what I mean? Tartaria for me was needed. I've always been interested in what other people have to say. And even just going backwards to how a lot of conspiracy started for me, I used to believe Planet X was going to enter our solar system. In oh, Nibiru, yeah, yeah. I was on board 100%. I wasn't moving out to the middle of nowhere to start preparing for it, but I had right. saw research, I would saw presentations, and in my gut, I was like, wow, this is really gonna happen. I was ready and, for it, dude, I was yeah. waiting. I <laughs> so, was waiting. <laughs> I've been duped before, so that's kind of another reason why I, was willing to open and close a new door with Tartaria. Had I not opened that door and experienced that, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I'm happy with where I'm at today. And again, most of the best knowledge that I've gained isn't from the research that I've done. It's the research on how I interact and how I right. create. Because that's also the big thing for me. And that's the only reason I really do do the channel is because it is a creative outlet. And I've admitted that way long ago that i'm not a truther i am a content creator and these are the subjects that i like looking into i'm not going to do you know podcast on what cardi b's latest single is all about i want to hear right. the weirdest thing possible and find out if there is any truth to it and some of the weird stuff there's some there's looking to be some truth to it some of your other weird stuff not so much I think you need that professionally, right? And it's not that you're being antagonistic whatsoever. Matter of fact, it's being more of a professional approach towards it. A book that I have recently that I'm reading that one of my fans got in touch with me and we had coffee and he let me borrow his book. I'm reading it right now. I'm going to use it for a presentation on Niagara Falls. Uh, star forts are, the academic term for them is Vauban style. I've spent hours upon hours on the internet researching star forts or bastion forts or whatever you want to call them. And that has never once come up, you know what I mean? So even though I think like I I've done all the research I could possibly do, then a new term I'm comes wondering up. what the next one is like, what's the next big conspiracy topic? You know what I mean? Cause I'm ready to get there. I'm ready to go there. I just feel like Tataria, I've hit a, a brick wall or a melted brick wall, if you will. And I just like, I don't know. How dare I just, you? <laughs> dude, I mean, I, like just to make an example of all the infighting, like I, one of those guys, I just went in and I was like, what about the Adirondack Mountains? Is that all melted buildings? And they're like, yes, absolutely. I'm like, do you even know what they are or where they are? Have you looked at any picture? You're just going to say, yes, they're melted buildings. Like I, I want to evolve past that. And like you said, Dustin, be taken seriously by like legitimate academics i'm not saying i want to like bow down to them but I, I want them to be able to look at what i'm saying and i don't want them to just be like this dude's had way too much dmt you know what i mean listening to too much joe rogan there hello freak bitches i'm watching the christian faith get demonized right in front of my eyes right now you know and who's to say thousand years down the road that or ten thousand years down the road that the christianity the angels don't become demigods like, this is the kind of stuff that can happen, I think, and what has been happening for a very long period of time. So hmm. his story, I guess, you know. Definitely, definitely. I think people also love to just have a scapegoat to blame, whether it's this group of religious people or this group of uh, fraternal order. You know, people just love, it makes them feel powerful. The same thing as clutching on to conspiracy theories. It just makes them feel like they're better than a lot right. of it has to do. And we, when you blame the Jays or whatever, it's like you're, you're placating to your own need for convenience. We we're saying earlier, we don't believe 100% in what each other are, you know, each other's research. There's, there's topics of dispute and whatever, but we're trying to work together. You know, it doesn't matter that I'm this or you're that, you know what I mean? We're trying to work together and come together and actually like, make progress you know we may as well just make our own secret society and then a hundred years from now people will be blaming the bears it was all the bears, <laughs> the bears. That's why i've just been you know, like kind of posting up and just like observing you know just kind of staying out of shit lately and just kind of seeing where things are going because i don't want to add to the confusion and the distortion that's already present in this uh 
circle of researchers. It's a good way to be, yo, for real. One thing that I've come to realize, and you kind of hinted at this before, Chris, like we knowing the truth, you can get compelled to like want to know the truth. I, I've resigned myself, and I think I've talked about this last with Woody. I'm, we, we might never know the truth of what Tartaria was or is or mud flood or whatever. Right. We can find out the cover up, though, right? We can see the cover up. Mm-hmm. And I'll know the truth when when I when I'm with Most High, and right. I'm content. I'm content with that because that's my my motivation is sufficed by finding out a lie or something that I was told when I was a kid that I had passion on, and now maybe might not be true. I want to know why. You know, 20, 30 years ago in school, if you tried to stand up and question this shit, they'd just kick your ass. They'd kick you out of school or put you in the loony bin. We're very lucky to be able to question the narrative right now is what I'm trying to get at. And I think that it would also help a lot to, I mean, I think we're all already there, but for the people watching, to not be so obsessed with finding the truth because we might not ever find it. We, it might not be there. You know, the people ruling the planet, or ruling the realm, however you want to see it, they might not even know. To me, this has all just been a slow-moving train colliding into, you know, Bruh. whatever your passengers are. But you had time to move. It's like that scene in Austin Powers. Watch out! Move! 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 Careful, Austin! Watch out! Watch out! So that's how I view our current situation. And that's also why when I'm looking back into the past, I'm not quick to give a lot of credit to they, them, the controllers, because I just don't think that they were also as sharp as, you know, some of us are making them out to be. That right. They can't actually get away with as much as we give them credit for. And that's another problem that I do take with the blanket term research is we don't have a lot of good oral history, but right. we have some of it. And each generation is getting a little bit softer and having it a little bit better. As you were saying, Chris, not all of them back then were playing video games and jerking off like whatever's happening today. So it's like the generation that didn't grow up with Mickey Mouse, who had it tough, is being told by the Mickey Mouse generation, you couldn't build anything. You guys couldn't do that. No way. Because that's too beautiful and we don't have beauty. And this is something that I've been wanting to get into is the uh, 45 goals of communism. And mm. number 23 on the list is remove all beautiful art from the world. And Whoa. we look at the world today, three, and we huh? have, there's no art in architecture. It's all just bland and ugly. Brutalism, no good right. art and music. The modern homogenized, is everything is homogenized, right. I'm sure we really could do that. We could still produce beauty through slowly tapping into Bill Cooper's older work which was turned on to me by Electric Johnny Hat. And even when I did my last video where I had Bill Cooper in the audio, people were chiming in, this dude is a shill. Other people are like, oh God, I miss Bill Cooper. You know, it's like, there's already that that comes up so quick. I don't know what the guy's deal was, but he did talk about architecture. He talked about the secret uh, teachings and we see all of these beautiful buildings. And is it possible that that's just the information from these mystery schools applied in that art. And that has been removed. It's not that we've lost it, is that it has purposely been removed and it's been removed from everything. So that's kind of the the rabbit hole that I'm slowly shifting over into. Now. Damn, dude. That's, yeah, that's heavy shit, man. That's what I'm all about. Hey, I, you're crushing I it too, Woody. Yeah. With your presentations, man. You kill it. It's because I don't have that's... G-Dub on my back anymore. <laughs> Where is G-Dub? Yeah, but that's uh, the rich and famous. He's he's a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> wow, <laughs> dude, he's crushing. That yeah. is, I'm so happy for it, man. I'm so happy. <laughs> 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 what you're just saying though, Woody, about how things aren't shown, it's not put out there because there's certain narratives or whatever. Um, certain people have certain interests, but Bill Cooper or whatever, he's the dude that I read the book and got me a tinfoil hat back in the day. Uh, it's all Illuminati. It's in line with what I'm talking about with Barry Fell. You don't hear about his work at all. It was on one uh, in search of a show back in the day, Leonard Nimoy. Now it's like in the archives of some back hallway in Babylon that nobody has even any motive or any merit to even look at. But it's there. Like I was saying earlier, it's in the academic papers if you want to look for it. 
But basically, I mean, being in the Iron Age, the Kali Yuga right now is what they say that we are basically in the caterpillar form and we're eating our own poop in syncretism. If you could align all these different religious works and different philosophies and ideologies, you might be able to actually piece some of the pieces together to get a, you know, a vague bird's eye view of what the hell is actually going on here. You know, you mentioned the Kali Yuga. Yeah. I, I listen to Paul pockets, his insights right. on faith are really good. And I'm a Christian listening to him, but I think that when you say the uh, Kali Yuga, it just makes me think of, for some reason, the longer time scale of things. And it's paralleled even with the, the Mayas, 5,000 miles away, right. and their right. long procession. Even mainstream archaeologists say that, oh, they don't know. But they got a small count, a medium count, and a, a baktun count, which is like, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's like 34,000 years or so, or it's like okay. a procession. Uh, yeah. History is an obfuscation of the true timeline. And it's I agree. a lot longer in the... You saying the Kelly Yuga made me think of that. Right. I think that's where syncretism is important because I think in all these different religions, despite what we think or feel about them emotionally or spiritually, I think that there's, you know, one, two percent truth in each religion, if not more, if not more. But like I've researched all major world religions and some of the minor ones. Like I don't know if you guys have ever looked into Jainism. It's like pre-Hinduism. And their temples are more complex than Angkor Wat. You know what I mean? And these people, they were so, they're so cautious about life. They carry a broom and sweep the ground in front of them so they don't accidentally step on bugs. Like these people are that high frequency where they refuse to even kill bugs. You know what I mean? Like I had a quite of right on my walls back in the day before because I was going to paint it when I was a kid. And one of the quotes that I had that I come up with was um, one of the hardest things to do in the world is have respect for every living creature. Seriously, because hardly, man. Because hardly anybody has ever tried to do it, really. I don't know if you guys have seen the new Matrix movie at all. The one that yeah, I just, just watched out. it last night. I've been wanting to kind of talk about it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think the beginning, it's it's saturated with a lot of truth drops, or what I would deem to be truth drops, you know, as far as when he says, uh, we hid the truth in the video game because no one's going to think it's the truth. It's just in a video game. You know, everybody's Wait, played it. Who cares? They say that? They say that? Wait, Dusty, yeah. have you not seen it? I haven't. It's no okay. I don't care if you... I don't okay. care. It's not really a spoiler. That's not like, at all. I don't care at all. The truth drops in movies, media in general, music. Right. Also, I'm a gamer. And a lot of the stuff Me that too, I come man. with, I show it. I share it. Yeah. I will have to say on the new Matrix movie, I thought it was a horrible film just from yeah, dude, start to it finish. Like, good. Almost kind of make a parody in a way. I know that's not the right it way was. to describe it, but it was kind of a parody of itself. With that said, there was definitely elements of it that were pretty solid. Would have been nice if they would have maybe played more into that realm. Won't try to, you know, give right. any spoilers. But yeah, I mean, I took a big edible last night for that one. It was like, okay, we're going to watch The Matrix now. <laughs> like, as soon as it started, it was just like, this can't be real. This is this movie? Like, holy crap. I think the best part of it uh, was Neil Patrick Harris's character and what right, that was. analyst. Because that was yeah. the most cerebral part when, like, you know, Neil was starting to, after he took the red pill, and all of a sudden that character showed up trying to keep him in right. the Matrix. That shit was really messing with my head. It kind of makes then, sense, um, man. It kind of makes yeah. sense a little bit. And then the um, the swarm, I thought, was a yeah. brilliant element, especially because right. when this, I won't say much on it, but when the swarm first happens, everyone's on a train wearing a mask. <laughs> yes, yeah. NPH is in it. Yeah, was, dude, I wasn't was definitely the most serious like, character. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much, but like he plays a, a, a big role. Like I thought he was going to be an NPC, and he's like. I don't want to ruin it for you, Dustin. I don't yeah. want to ruin it. But the swarm, going back to the swarm real quick, um, I've toyed around with the, the idea that a lot of these people, you know, driving in traffic next to us, they might be NPCs, they might be non-player characters, they might not have souls. And I, I hate to think like that, though, because I'm like, no, there's no way there has to be a soul, even if it's just a little husk of a shred of a shard of God's creation, there's still a fractal representation of the Most High. They still have the features of God's likeness, you know what I mean? So like, I hate that idea, but then when I saw the swarm in the Matrix, 
and it's just like normal people on the train and then they just turn into fucking demons and they just start attacking Ooh. you know whoever the matrix says to attack they're jumping out windows at them like literally human <laughs> bombs jumping out of windows like i wonder dude, if there's uh, a, a, a gregor notion on that where they try to actually manifest well, it by talking of it you know uh, in the original matrix if you weren't awake an agent could take over your body and right use you however they needed in this version mm. it's upgraded and they don't need the agents anymore they can just flip the switch on anyone who's not awake and they become zombies it's implied more etherical type of deal maybe it's remotely Pretty much. Can access like, yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, spirituality and, and what's going on here in, in this realm, like you were saying, Chris, that um, I don't think that they are necessarily non-playable characters. They're there, they're just, they are, unfortunately, controlled by, you know, whatever their family raised them to be, and, of course, how the government raised their family to be. Right. Um, going back into some of those Bill Cooper conversations, and Bill talks about the mystery school teachings and what the religions are. And the religion, supposedly, that they're covering up, keeping away from us, is the idea that creation never began and will never end. It's a constant stream. So in their version, there is no creator who created nothing. And kind of like the Big Bang Theory, same idea. There was nothing and then there was something. By mm -hmm. creating this idea that something needed to be created, you've actually already fractured you know, your, your connection to it all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always the key is keeping everyone confused, not right. having a good connection to what the source is, whatever that may be. And then you are more easily controllable. That was another random thing that came up through my mind when we were talking about the vax and if it cuts yourself off from the higher system, how does that work in the system where if all of a sudden all these To say I'm glad that we can talk about it like this and me too, man. This guy's having the really jack great. boots at the door telling us to go to the asylum, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> this is the asylum. Yeah, this was a really good conversation and be able to hammer it out like this. I appreciate it. Um, right. I, I hope we, we should definitely do it again soon. Now, I'm pretty mentally strong. I've always been kind of a like fortress in my mind, you know? That fortress in your mind, is that a Valbon style fortress? I mean, I'm trying to I kind of just saw it.